Hey everyone, this is three questions with Dr. Rachel Edo Eka. There we go. I get it. Here we are. Okay. I got Dr. Rachel on and I love her stuff. She's a, a principal in the Maryland area, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Seven and so I've like been seeing you. I can't say X. I don't know why I can't say it. I'm going to just say Twitter. Let's, I let's see say you Twitter. on there and I just love your stuff. Like how um, truly child centered you are. And um, one of the things that really kind of stuck out to me uh, is a lot of your journey looks a lot like when I was a principal several years ago and connecting and, you know, seeing with kids. So just thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast today. I really excited to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me, George. I really appreciate this. Yeah. And so um, we're going to get into three questions right away, but I do want to make sure I share, um, and you can get this book down in the, the link down below, um, Dr. Rachel's uh, book, The Principal's Journey, Navigating the Path to School Leadership. We're going to actually have another podcast, talk more about um, this book, but if you can just kind of give us like the one minute synopsis of the book, that's a, I would love to hear about it. Yeah. So I wrote the book for any teacher leader or assistant principal who's ready to make the jump to the principalship or to a school-based leadership role. So in my mind, I thought about if I could compile all the information that I've learned from my mentors that I've learned along my leadership journey into one place, that would be very helpful for people. I like to think of it as almost like a mentor in a book. So if you wanted to know how to interview and practice interview questions, how to make sure you have a strong cover letter, how do you have hard conversations? conversations with people? How do you build relationships and rapport quickly? How do you, you know, make hard decisions and a work-life balance? So all the things that I think have been helpful to me, um, I put into one book, there's space for reflections for people to think about their own journeys and make next steps so that they can reach their goals. So I'm really, really happy with the reception of the book. And I'm just excited to continue to help people reach their goals. I'm, I'm like a little upset right now that you share this. I'm like, where was this when I became a principal, right? Because that, you know, yes. that, there's a lot of things there too, especially um, when you talk about all the things that administrators are expected to do, you know, similar to teachers, but also like have some work-life balance. It seems like it's not conceivable, but I know you, you do a, a really good job of that. So like I said, check out uh, the principal's journey. It is in the description down below, especially if you're looking to go leadership. Do you, and I know we're supposed to get in three questions, but I got to ask you this right away. Do you find like a lot of people that you meet that would be like really great principals, really great administrators have this perception that if you go into the principalship, it is, you know, you got to do things a certain way. And like, basically you're, you won't be around kids anymore or anything like that. Do you find that when you're having those conversations? Yes, 100%. And this is why I love speaking with leaders and aspiring leaders at different conferences and events, because I have shown that you can make the principalship your own. I had to learn that. Mm -hmm. It is true. You could make a choice to be in your office all day, mm -hmm. but if your heart is with kids, you can also make the choice to be with your students and supporting your staff members and families. So I am the type of principal that's on the ground, and I definitely encourage future principals and assistant principals to really be student-centered and making sure you're making that impact you know, in that positive presence wherever you are, that's really, really important in the role. And so I'm hope I'm hopeful that I'm modeling that yeah. for people as they're learning more about the role because we can do it. We just have to you totally. have to see it sometimes. Yeah, like I like there's a lot of people that have really great vision for education. And I'm like, this a principalship would be a really amazing opportunity for you, but they're like, Well, I have to do these things. I'm like, No, 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 you're the boss. You gotta do right. Yourself, right? Exactly. So, there's flexibility like, there. I like how I I say you're the boss and you say you make it your own, which yours is way better than what <laughs> All right. So let's get into three questions. So I know you and I were talking before you have like a kindergarten background. I'm sure you've taught other things as well. So like, you, you, you know, I, I see, I see so many things that you're posting with your students. And I just absolutely love that. You can tell you're very child centered, um, in the work that, that you do. And, and I shouldn't say just child centered, cause I know you advocate hugely for your staff as well. So yes. really kind of focus on uh, being people centered. But if you go back, you know, if you think about all the great teachers you've had, all the great teachers you've worked with, who's a teacher that really inspired you and why? Um, I would say one of my favorite teachers, I've, I've had so many, uh, so it's hard for me to choose one, but Mr. Adams, he was my teacher in middle school. He was, uh, he taught science. And at the time as a sixth grader, I really was not as interested in science as I probably could have been, but Something about his energy he really sparked that interest for me, and um, I just loved his style. He was very personal, personable. Um, he was very, very bright, very gifted teacher, 
And he just had a way of connecting with each of us in an individual way. And so again, science was not something that right. I was particularly interested in, but he helped spark that interest for me. And I just always remember how, how caring of a person he was. I love that. So we're, Hey, you didn't know this, but we're giving Mr. Adams <laughs> a shout out button. So I love that. The, uh, you know, it's funny that you said that because the class that I hated the most is science. Oh, interesting. And the teacher I love the most was a science teacher. And I love that. you know, he actually, um, I, I think he, we kind of made a deal. Maybe I shouldn't be putting this, you know, recording this. <laughs> He said he he you know like how you can kind of round stuff. He rounded up to pass me no, that's nice. with a deal that I would never teach children science. Oh, okay, <laughs> so great. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll take it. Don't worry, that's never happening. So yeah, that's uh, and it was the same thing. I thought about the passion, you know, the excitement for that too. And even though I really struggled with it, I was always felt blessed to be in that classroom. All right, yes. so I know you work with a ton of administrators, um, and. You know, it's amazing you talk about work-life balance because I know you present as well, and uh, and you know you still you really focus on your family and uh, doing this work. And so I know you work with um, great administrators, great principals. If you think of a really great principal that you had, you worked with, who's somebody you think of and why? I have two. So my first would be my elementary school principal, Mr. Slaycom. Uh, he again just loved. It was very clear that he loved all of all of the students in the building. He knew all of our names. He really cared about us. He had a little signal. He would give us a thumbs up. That was like his special thing. So wherever uh, we saw him in the hallway, it was just that silent signal that he acknowledged us. And uh, all of us loved him. He was one of the first principals that I had that we had positive rewards. We would do pizza parties with him because we had great attendance, because we were working hard in the classroom. And I love that. So for me, going to the principal's office was never punitive. Right. And that's something that I take with me now. I do lunch bunches with my students for rewards um, all the time so that they know that it's not just a, a place where you go when you're in trouble to the principal's office. We can have fun together. And then my other principal would be my mentor, Mrs. Balter. She is the person who tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, Rachel, I see something in you. I think you could run a building one day. At the time, I was a kindergarten team leader. I said, no, I'm going to stay in my classroom the rest of my career in 30 years and retire. And she said, I don't think so. <laughs> so she really helped me learn about the role. She was very authentic in her leadership. She asked amazing questions. She used to ask me, Hey, what's your feedback for me after this meeting? I've never had a principal ask me, right. a teacher, for feedback. So I just love that about her. Um, she was active. She had her hands in everything. She always knew what the staff needed and was able to provide that. So she was an excellent model for me. All right. Both of them. Get one of those. Love it. Yes. The, uh, you know, so I, that, I had that very same philosophy about, you know, being a principal in the sense that. I, I was terrified to go to the principal's office when I was a kid and it was almost intentional that it was meant to be terrifying. Right. It was like, right. you know, and, and kind of just thinking about that. And the thing that kind of stuck with me and I'm, I'm interested in, in your thoughts on this kids do get in trouble though, too. Right. And so they're like, when you have those opportunities to kind of build that rapport, when something goes wrong, how does that benefit when a kid shows up? Right. Cause they, I don't think they're just like, Oh, now it's a horrible place, but like, how, how does that help you when, you know, something does go wrong? Yeah. So it's the relationship that helps. So they know that I'm not always there in trouble, right? So if they come to see me, they might've had lunch with me last week or earlier right, in the week. Right. And, and this week they've made a mistake. So we can talk about that and say, hey, um, you know, let's talk about our choices and our decisions and how we can make them better. It's also helpful for the parents. So in my room, when we have lunch bunches in the office, I take pictures and I print them out and I send them home with kids. I love so that. the parents also know, oh, wow, you had lunch with the principal. So then if I call them and their child has made a mistake, they're like, I know, you know, right. Dr. Lewickett loves my kids. She was just with them the other day. So it really helps across all of the settings, not just at school, but also at home as I'm building connections with parents as well, that they know I know their child. That's really uh, important. It, one of the piece of advice I give to principals all the time is that the worst thing that you can start off a conversation with a kid when they come into your office because they're in trouble is what you, what's your name again? Right. Worst thing you can say, right? Because they they immediately there's no connection there. There's right. no and there's no weight in your words when you share this. All right. So I I, I love this and I love the the parent connection because I think that's a really important aspect that we don't pay enough attention to. So yes. Last question. Um, you know all of these incredible things. You know you are pulled out of being a teacher. 
um, and, and seeing this, but you know, I, I guarantee if you look back on your career, there's things you wish you would have done differently. Right. And it's, you know, I think that if I always say this, if you don't regret some of the stuff you did in your first year, you're probably not that good right now. Right. Yeah, that's true. Like, you know, the whole hope is that you continuously get better as we ask of our kids and our, and our, um, you know, staff. So if you can go back to your very first year of teaching, what advice would you give to yourself? Yeah, I, I think I, at the time, this is now almost 20 years ago, I really wanted to be perfect in all things. And I think looking back, if I focused on just one thing to be strong in, that would have helped kind of build my confidence there. So I would definitely recommend for teachers who are new, you know, don't try to do everything the best, really focus your energy on, um, you know, good teaching practices or, you know, building connections with students and families and then build from there. Because I think teachers can, um, feel overwhelmed at times. I know I felt very overwhelmed as a first year teacher and I know the responsibilities that teachers have now are even more than we had before. So I think really just getting away from the idea that we have to be perfect and just you know working on one thing really well, getting known for something um, would be, would have been helpful for me to hear. I think, I think that's like, you know, that was, uh, Hey, what advice you give to your first year teacher self or George right now? Yes, <laughs> like that's, that's my issue. I'm like, you know, I still struggle with that. And, uh, you know, we, we tend to be, and I think, you know, this is true with all educators and, you know, is that we tend to be harder on ourselves and other people are too. And you gotta kind of give yourselves grace with all this stuff. So I'm yeah. excited to talk more. Um, you know, with you and hear more about your book. And like I said, uh, check out the principal's journey. It is in the link down below. Dr. Rachel, I can't wait to talk more. So thanks for taking the time, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.